heck yes. No leaks. Before we uh, get this baby moving, here's another problem that I found when uh, I pulled it back in. I don't think it should be able to move like that. You tell me what you think, but I would say that's not okay. Let's see if we can figure out a way to make it tight. So it looks to me like there's some shims right here that aren't tight. These bolts probably go straight down and tighten down. All right, so on the wobbly track situation, here's what I found out. So on either side of the basically bracket that holds this front idler onto the roller frame, there are this, this plate, this flat plate. This particular plate is actually off of the parts machine. Basically, it's an extra plate that I found. And these are the two plates that were on it. And right here, you can see there's a raised, like, it's basically worn into this over the years. But the other problem with it is that it had these shims. And the shims were kicking the guides, these guide plates, out a little further away from the actual roller frame. And between the shims and the wear on the plate, there was basically like a half an inch of extra space between the, the, the guide slash the side plate and the actual roller frame, causing you to be able to wiggle the whole track back and forth. And so I found this plate off the donor machine, and you can see there's wear on this side. Well, this plate was probably installed improperly because this hole is supposed to go around this center nut so you can adjust it, which is fine. For me, because I put this the way it goes, and it is perfectly flat on that back side, making contact with the roller frame. Now, question for all you cat mechanics out there. Is this supposed to be tight against the roller frame? Should I have shims in there to keep it from moving side to side? Or is this supposed to be tight against the roller frame to keep it from wobbling back and forth? I am not an expert on this, and I'd love to know your opinion, your thoughts. Um, it definitely makes a big difference. So let me know the way it should be. I'm doing what I'm, I can figure out right now just to get this machine moving and able to, to drive out of here so we can, we can move it back to the property. So for now, we're going to put it together like that, make it work, and go from there. All right, so the outside plate is installed, and you can see there's still some play so the plate mounts in these four holes and basically guides this and holds it tight on the inner side of this roller frame so before I go putting it back together these are one half 20 threads that are pretty well I wouldn't say rough but they've definitely seen their fair share of abuse so I'm gonna clean them out with a tap and then we're gonna put it back together You can just see all the gunk build up that it, it pulled out. So I also replaced, there's two bolts on top here that push down on a little arm and that puts tension on a plate, like a shim under here. And so I placed both those bolts because they were in pretty rough shape. This is missing, I believe, the uh, grease zerk for the inside of this roller. There's a hole there I can feel. So I'm gonna have to do something about that later. Right now I don't have what I need. So I've just got it, got some penetrating oil soaking in there and I'm gonna have to get the air gun and blow that out, clean it out and figure out how to, hopefully the threads are still good in there. They feel like there's a hole still there. I'm hoping it's not broken, but we'll look at that later. Right now let's get this wobble tightened up by putting the plate back on. So on this one, the wear side, I'm gonna put out. And so it's basically gonna be right like that. 
All right, now I'm gonna clean the threads up on these uh, on the bolts just real quick. Run a die over them. So this just straightens up any mangled threads that aren't quite straight, cleans the dirt and gunk out of the space between each thread, and just makes it work better when we get it back on the machine. Definitely not a completely necessary step, but one that'll make life a hell of a lot easier when I have to take it apart again. A little marine grease in the bolt holes and on this surface. That'll do. So I was just messing with this uh, upper roller guide, the cap for the, the grease zerk. When I went to put it back on, the hole, there's a bolt right here, back here, that is loose. So that whole roller guide moves. So I gotta get that figured out, fixed. He's tightened in. Even though this particular roller is in rough shape, I still don't want that breaking off. I need some support to keep the track rolling straight, at least to get out of here. Right back here, there's a bolt there that's not all the way in, and there's a bolt here that's missing. And then there's a bolt, two bolts on the other side that are loose. The plan is gonna be to jack the track up and off this roller guide so I can pull it all the way out, clean those bolt holes out, and if there's a broken bolt on this side, try and get that out and then put it back in. You know, I'm optimistic that we can at least get it put back together so uh, we can roll this baby out of here. Oh, and check this out. So here we have the bottom or top part for a chain link fence gate, a pipe clamp, a hose clamp with some bike chain in it, and some wire. All clamping a piece of pipe that somebody cut in half and made a spacer so that essentially, so this is the, this is the tensioner for the, the idler. And the way it works is this is a huge nut and there should be a screw in there. And so you would turn this and it would push, the springs would push more tension forward, tightening up the track. Well, it's probably not working right because they basically cut a pipe to the size they think they needed, put it in there and then clamped it in with whatever the heck they had laying around. And so, you know, whatever for now, I'm gonna have to figure out what to do about that later. I'm not overly worried about it at this moment, but um, this doesn't have the hydraulic uh, ram like that you would use a grease gun to expand. It's essentially a big screw. So, so yeah, we'll figure that one out later, but definitely a bit of a redneck rig on that. But at the end of the day, I get it. I mean, they probably need this baby to work and they did what they had to do to make it work for that day. But the problem is, is they didn't come back and do it right. And that's the issue I have with it. So, all right, let's get this track jacked up out of the way and go from there. This jack job is not very safe. It did the trick. I can now access this, but I would be completely stupid to stick my hands in there with just this jack and a board and whatever. So we're gonna brace it up with some additional timber so that we feel safer about not losing a limb. Because I wanna keep my arms. should do.
So this is the bolt that was loose, and it actually looks like they just stuck a skinnier bolt through it and put a nut on the bottom, and it didn't hold. We have one broken bolt right here, and these three are okay. I don't know if that one's got threads or not because of the fact that they had a bolt through it, but I'll clean this up, figure out what to do from there. And to weld a nut onto this bolt that's broken, try and get it out. Got that broken bolt out. I've already cleaned the other three holes out with a tap. I'm gonna do that real quick to this one, then we're gonna put this piece back in and move on. Rock salad, baby. Now it ain't moving. Yeah, buddy. So a friend of ours got a hold of me and asked me if I wanted to have some caterpillars because they were about to basically make a chrysalis which you know that's what those little green things are they're called chrysalis and they basically transform from a caterpillar to a butterfly so these three butterflies here are monarch butterflies and they hatched about a day ago, so we keep them for a day, and then we release them. And so that's what we're gonna do this morning. Release some monarch butterflies. monarch butterflies and these are additional 
ones still in the transformation phase from the caterpillar to the butterfly. And so you can see like that is an empty one. And then this one here is a dark, it's, it's getting dark, which means that that one is going to transform into the butterfly and, and come out of the, the uh, chrysalis soon. I didn't know they were called chrysalis. I thought they were called cocoons. That's what I learned in grade school. Somebody lied to me. <laughs> Apparently uh, moths are in cocoons. Butterflies are in chrysalis. So we still got a few more. We got one, two, three, four, five more to hatch and release. Should be fun. So the cylinders have some slight surface rust from just sitting and just barely I can feel a little something there. So before we move this machine, all four cylinders, I'm gonna clean the exposed chrome, the exposed uh, cylinder section so that we can try and minimize damaging the seals when we go to actually operate the, uh, the bucket and the arm. So I'm gonna work on that now. Much better. Bling, bling, bling. So you gotta be real gentle as you kinda peel back the layers of uh, crud to finally expose the rubber gasket, which is right there. So now you can see it. Let's see if I can... Uh... So I try and keep the, the metal on the... or the... the screwdriver metal on the actual metal ring that is uh that the seal is in so i'm not going to gouge that seal out and then when i do have to get near the seal i just go really gentle Now I can actually grease it. All right, so I'm going around greasing all the grease zerks, and I get to this one and it's broken, so we're gonna replace it. So as you can see, like the, the tip of it has broken off. All right, so this is the hydraulic tank right here on the side of the machine. And right here is where the hydraulic oil goes in, slash, you're supposed to check it. And there's a screen in here. So we pull this clip out. Some uh, dirt and gunk in here, but this is actually looks pretty good. So it should be up to right here or so, hydraulic fluid. So I'm gonna clean this screen out, and then we're gonna put some new fluid in it. I'm using this funnel because it has a filter in the end of it. So I'm filtering it here, but I'm also filtering it with the filter that's in this uh, little reservoir here, just to be safe. All right, so this is the 
hydraulic filter assembly and right here on top is a bolt that you're supposed to pull out to bleed the air well it has broke the head broke off and at some point somebody basically put a groove in it to fit a flat head well i've tried getting it out i can't so i'm gonna go ahead and take this whole cover off and the problem is is that right now i'm not getting any movement out of the hydraulics at all nothing no arm, no nothing, no noises. Right. I wanna see if there's any clog in this filter assembly or see what's going on here. So we're gonna start with that. I know that having this knuckle on here makes, takes some of the torque away, but I can't get the impact onto that. So we're gonna go old school. Leverage, baby. That's how it goes. The oldest trick in the book. I got to looking at this hydraulic filter assembly and essentially this is the filter and there was a bunch of surface rust right along the edge in here so I kind of you know wire brushed that out this I believe this has to spin inside here I could be wrong but it also has a valve here that I don't know if it was stuck open or anything, but I don't think so. I think it was just, I think it might have been stuck closed. So this spring sits right here. This assembly goes right in there like that. And then the whole thing goes in that tube. And then the top cover essentially compresses this, pushing it, sealing it down around the bottom. I, fe I felt inside the, the canister there and everything feels fine. I mean, there is no burrs on the cylinder or, or on the walls. And then it's just an open outlet down below to the hydraulic system. So I'm wondering maybe that this basically the rust right in here, because there's a whole bunch of rust right in here, cleaned it out, a bunch of rust right there, and a bunch of rust on this spring. And then there was a bunch of rust right around this edge. And I don't know if this does spin in there or, you know, if maybe this, this valve here was, was closed and wasn't allowing hydraulic fluid to flow through. So I'm going to put it back together. I do need to get a new filter. Um, it does have the Caterpillar number here. The, it's a 4J6064, 10 millimeter, 4J6064, 10M caterpillar uh, hydraulic filter well i guess i'll just give it a try i mean what's the worst that can happen it doesn't work oh wait we're already there so yeah put it back together give it a shot it doesn't work we'll go another route here's a look down into the canister essentially it's got this wall and then down below there is a just an outlet hole that rubber o-ring gasket rides right here on this rim and the filter just fits right down in the middle so and get that put back together
So either way, I'm still going to have to deal with this broken uh, bleeder valve bolt.
Hydraulic? Uh huh. It's really not that bad, actually. It's right under the seat. This is why I didn't want to take all those hoses home. All right, so I was doing my little power parade thing. I hear a boom. And then I was hydraulic fluid dripping out everywhere. And so this hydraulic hose right here, the lower one of these two, this hydraulic hose here, here, for this cylinder, the shorter cylinder on top, blew. As you can see the drip right there. Which is really not a bad problem because it's not too bad to get to. So luckily, I have a parts machine. And I was able to go grab both of the shorter hoses off of uh, the two cylinders. This one looks a little bit rough, cracking already. And then this one looks better. So let's see which one it'll fit in there and try and get it in there and go from there. All right, as you can see, it's not daytime anymore, but I got the hydraulic hose in there. So this one may blow out too. It's got a little, so it was, it was a bear getting it just the slightest little bend because it's such an old hose. But hopefully for now it'll work. I guess we'll find out, right? If it blows, it blows. Somebody's always saying that. Usually it's a she. I don't even know who this she is. She's always saying stuff. The hydraulics work. We, obviously, we blew one hydraulic hose. Still needs a ton of work. But we're getting there. So next up, we're going to put 
the old grill back on, the bottom pan back on, kind of get everything bolted back on, the front cover for the hydraulic pump back on, and we'll go from there. Pretty soon we're gonna move this baby out of here. I got here today, and the first thing that I see is hydraulic fluid. Just everywhere. <laughs> 